poetry can be written, read, and recited. Through Jen Birchmeyer's lens, poetry can be seen. She uses her camera to capture lines of life that can't be written, only witnessed. It was through loss that she found her love of portraiture. As a photographer, she advocates for self-love, celebrating our imperfections and body positivity through boudoir. Thank you so much, Jen Birchmeyer, for joining us here on Aware Now to share the space and to share your story. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Of course. So <laughs> let's get in this way. When it comes right down to it, life is a balancing act. And more often than not, it seems that when we lose one thing, we find another. Jen, can you share the story with us about your sister, the sister that you lost, and then mm -hmm. the passion for your portraiture that you found? Yes, so I've had a passion for photography and portraiture for longer than it has been since I've lost her, but it it created a whole new meaning behind why I felt my work was so important. Um, started in high school, um, photographed a few friends for fun, and it just evolved into this thing where um, I was able to run with it full time eventually. Um, in the process though, when it came to learning the art, I started with an old 35 millimeter film camera in which I developed all my film myself. It was my little sister, her name is Maya. Um, we are seven years apart, um, but she was always the willing model for me to practice and play with. So we'd take lampshades off lamps and like mess with light. Um, I learned that way through her. And I'm so grateful because now I still have those prints hanging in my hallway. So when I walk down my hallway every day, I, I pass by her photos and I get to look at her and I'm so grateful, even though she was younger than it was before she passed in the photos. Um, she was pretty young. I would say the photos of her, maybe she's between like seven and 10 years old. Um, but I'm just beyond grateful to have those. With that said, it has changed, like I said, my outlook on why I feel it's so important to offer the service to other people as well, because I've had clients that I have photographed that have lost loved ones, grandparents, and I photograph their wedding and I watch them share these photos of them, them dancing with the grandparent or with a father even or a mother. And I'm just so honored to be able to have given that to them because I'm honored that I was able to gift it to myself. Didn't even know the gift I was giving myself at the time, um, but it turned into something that has changed me. And I'm grateful and I just wanna do it for others as well. Mm -hmm. If I might ask, how did you lose your sister, Gemma? How, how, did, you, yeah. how did you lose her? Um, she was 26 years old and um, died of a heroin overdose. It was a, a few years of a battle with the addiction. Um, it She went through rehab a few times and we were all very hopeful and yet always found ourselves to be disappointed because she always found her way back. But um, I, I honestly feel her tie to addiction had a lot to do with having some self issues. Um, having issues with how she saw herself, how she loved herself. And it, it, I think she gave up in that aspect and that's what happened. Um, it's allowed me to also put a spin on things as far as boudoir goes, because I, I understand what she felt. I saw what it did to her, um, but I also know that with some help, maybe someone might see a different perspective, um, a more positive light on themselves, who they are, their bodies. I am so um, pro self-love, pro body, um, come one, come all. And I hope it translates into that and helps someone in that way. Absolutely, because again, to your point, to be able to see things literally through a different lens, to see themselves through a different lens. Um, you know, so we, thank you for sharing all of that so much. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the art of preserving moments in time as you do, what are you, I want to get a little geeky here for a moment. What are yeah. you <laughs> in love with most? Is it 
the verb, I can talk with you this way because you're a word nerd like me. Uh, Are you in love with the verb of capturing the photo or the noun of the portrait itself? It's a great question. I would not feel right if I said I loved one or the other more. Um, It's kind of like saying, you know, do you love the journey or the destination? And you have to, you have to love it all. I love the connection photography brings me through people. I am a people person. People make me happy. That's why I'm not out shooting landscapes. I want to be upfront and personal with people. I want to learn about them. I want to see what's important to them. I want to get to know them. Um, and the journey in doing that is my journey in creating art for them and creating document or in documenting who they are at that moment because I don't think photography has anything to do with making a pretty picture. And that sounds ridiculous and I get it, but it doesn't to me. I don't care if the photo is aesthetically beautiful. I want you to look at that photo and I want you to feel what they felt or feel what you felt in it and let that help you remember that moment. Um, So with that said, the journey is so important. The, The act of working with people and taking pictures to me is a joy in itself. But at the same time, look at what my sister's portraits have given me as an end result. So that end result to me is equally as important because they are our legacy. When we're gone, there is nothing to remember us other than these little memories that dance in our heads or the photos that hang on our walls or little video clips that we manage to get. That's all we have. So I'd say that's pretty significant as well. All of it. (laughs) Absolutely well said to the destination and the journey both. Um, I guess you can't have one without the other. So that makes complete sense. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, so, and, and, you, and you talked briefly about this, just as there are different types of writing, there are different types of photography mm-hmm. and your genre of choice is boudoir as mentioned. So I just love to hear about your love of boudoir and your first experience with it. How did you come into all of this? So I started shooting professionally maybe 15 years ago. And I started full on with weddings. Weddings are, and I mean, I've always done portraits and stuff, but weddings are what kind of turned me on to boudoir photography. I feel like they kind of go hand in hand with each other. Um, A lot of women wanted pretty pictures to give to their husbands as a gift or whatever the reason it was, it tied a lot to weddings. So that's why I ended up finding myself in it. Over the years, it's kind of gone in opposite direction. So I don't promote bridal boudoir while I still shoot it. I definitely love it and take it when it comes, but I try so hard to push boudoir on a different level. I think there is zero reason that someone should need to to celebrate themselves, to celebrate where they're at in that moment, celebrate their body at that moment. I think all the little reasons are significant. Um, So I, I push needing no reason instead of having a wedding as a reason, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can say, I remember one of my first photo shoots for Boudoir. I had a studio in Fenton at the time and the woman walked in and I remember watching her move and her hands were just shaking so hard. Mm. And I I mean, that's my job is to calm those nerves, to make it enjoyable for her, to let her relax because you're not going to get great stuff unless they feel that comfort. And by the end of the shoot, she made a comment to me that made such an impact. And she told me how she felt so beautiful, that she's never felt more beautiful. And right there was like light bulb for me. I was like, I can make someone see themselves this way as a career, like done, sign me up, this is it. I love being able to help people see themselves in a beautiful light, not a not under judgment. There is no judgment. I, I do my best to create a very safe place for people when they come to me. And um, I think that's why I love it so much. I just got goosebumps when you said yeah. what she said. Um, it changes wow. things. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, people look at boudoir often and they're like, oh, sexy pictures, naked pictures. And I don't see it like that at all. While yes, are they sexy? Absolutely. But it it really, that is not the reason behind boudoir. It's such an empowering thing to do. 
I watch women come in and they're so proud of themselves when they leave. Like, whoa, look what I just did. I was terrified and look at me, I did it and I rocked it. And then to see them see their photos and be like, that's me. I'm like, damn right, that's you. You're gorgeous, you're perfect the way you are. Celebrate yourself. So it's it's not all about the the sexual aspect, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So much deeper than that. Yeah. Um, you know, so in addition, to being a photographer, you, Jen, are a writer, a poet, who knows it? <laughs> Let's stay on this topic of love. What is it that you love about writing poetry? And do you have a favorite piece that you care to share today? So I, and I'm going to be real and honest here, I haven't picked up a pen in a long time. Um, I remember growing up middle school, high school, even shortly after that, where I feel like my journals are what let me survive some moments of my life. It was my form of therapy for myself. Um, I, I explored myself in that way with words. I loved hearing others be vulnerable when I listened to other people. Um, it translated its way through my work just on a different perspective, I suppose more of a visual instead of an audible perspective. Um, so I don't have any new work and I, I I need to dig up all of my stuff because as you know, I have some big plans. I really wanna push myself. I like putting myself in some uncomfortable situations and I'm not great at speaking in front of everybody, um, but I wanna do it. And I think that doing something like that as a poetry night or a spoken word night at the studio would be incredible and also hopefully inspire others to to feel too so absolutely absolutely well i'm very much looking forward to it yay when the time comes right um so you know there is there is one last question i do have for you today Jen, and that is you know, the fact that you have made a passionate career of capturing poetry with your camera for those looking for a career that they can be passionate about, but can't seem to find one that satisfies. What advice do you have? It's funny you ask, because I think like within the last week, I had this conversation with somebody. Somebody had shared that they they don't have a college degree, that they're uninspired and they want to do something that's that they feel is important to them. And my response to that person was, when you can't find yourself in a career choice or a life choice or whatever it is, then that is your opportunity to create that. Create what you want. You don't wait for it to present itself to you. Time is precious. And um, I speak from very much experience. I've been shooting for 15 years, but I've only been full time in what I love for the last five-ish years. It took a long time for me to be brave and give up a salary give up my insurance, to jump at something I was so moved by. Um, but I also know I trust myself. If there's something I want bad enough, there is no doubt in my mind that I will have it because I, I won't let myself fail because even if I do fail, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to learn from that and I'm going to continue to come back harder. It's not possible to not get it. And I say that to everybody. If you want it bad enough, it's there for your, it's there for the taking, but it's not an easy take. Be prepared to put the effort in, be prepared to put the time in. Um, but life's too short to work or live a way that isn't inspiring and motivating to you. Absolutely. And I love how you say that if it's like, it's there, take it, but the take is not easy. And as long as you can accept that, then mm -hmm. get it. Yeah, right. absolutely, absolutely. It's all so scary. And I get that because I was terrified, but the, the fear is worth the end goal. I feel like I'm doing something positive, that I'm offering something that means something to people. I'm not working for someone else just to make money. Money's great, but that's not why I do what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I love people and I think it offers them something. So much better than pushing paper. <laughs> Push it, papers. <laughs> Although that's an important thing for people to do too. Um, but uh, thank you so much yeah. for sharing your story, for sharing your passion. Uh, thank you for helping all of us become a bit more aware now. 
Thank you so much. Thanks for having me and thanks for listening.